morning, Lionhearts. Joel Paljor and the Lion. As you can tell, I'm wearing a different pair of sunglasses today, and we are doing a special Patreon sunglass vlog for Al Hagland, Albert Hagland. What we're going to do today is I'm going to take you on a walking tour. This is going to actually turn into two vlogs, so Al, you get two vlogs. Um, we're going to take a walking tour of Manhattan today, and I'm going to take you by all the places that I think of or throughout my life that I've thought of when I hear the name New York City. Movie related, TV related, um, various things that are related. But we're going to take two days worth and we're going to walk around the city and I'm going to tell you what was filmed here, what happened here, why this is important, why I think in New York City here. And you're going to get to see a lot of the city. We have almost 30 things planned to see. So, Days of Jordan the Lion begins now. And this is absolutely a perfect day in New York City weather-wise. It's a little overcast, the weather is nice and kind of breezy. So we're heading to now is 44th Street. If we didn't go to this place first, I think the ghost of Shelley Winters would haunt me from here on. You gotta love this, a statue of Jackie Gleason right here in the middle of town. <laughs> There we go. Well, here it is. The famous actor studio. Long time home of the greatest actors in American cinema history. Now this was uh, founded in 1947 by Cheryl Crawford, Robert Lewis, and the wonderful director Ilya Kazan. And it was for the purpose of teaching the method of Konstantin Stanislavski, the acting method and they pretty much ran the helm here until Lee Strasberg kind of took it over in 1951. Now it bounced around for quite a while as far as the location, taking over different theaters for different, like various times, but this became the permanent home as of now since 1955. So you would have had some pretty incredible names walk through these doors now. James Dean did study with the Actors Studio, but not at this location. But some of the names, as far as I like, mentioned Shelley Winters, you can go a little further than that even. And I'll mention that she used to tell me how she used to bring Marilyn Monroe here, and Marilyn was always terrified to get up and uh, perform anything, which is kind of odd because that was exactly the purpose of their method here, was to completely um, tear away any um, judgment from your peers to where you could go anywhere as an actor. You could push yourself to any limit, try anything without fear of rejection. And um, one of the methods, it was called the method. What, that was part of the idea of this was to find out the backstory on your character, find out everything about how your character would think, how it would live, the experiences it would have had, even experiences that you don't see in the movie. You have to create those kind of things and that puts you more into a character and less as an actor playing a character. Now, some of the actors that, um, and as far as I know, the last time I heard, Alec Baldwin, Ellen Burstyn, um, Al Pacino were all kind of the heads of this now, or at least as of like a year ago. But you have people that went here as Marlon Brando, Harvey Keitel, Robert De Niro, Dustin Hoffman, uh, Bruce Dern, Robert Duvall, James Dean, well, not in this location, but James Dean was a method actor with the, the actor studio, Paul Newman, Dennis Hopper, um, Martin Landau. Yeah, pretty historic. Just to think people coming and going from this location even now are setting the standard for acting. And you can see over here it used to be a church. UP Church. There you go, Shelly. I knew you'd want to see this. So now we're going to head off to another one of Shelly's favorite places in New York City. We're going to check out some characters on the walls. Alright, this was one of Shelly's hangouts after doing theater every night. This was her go-to place. So we're in the theater district here. As you can see, the Phantom here. That would be really good. You see that? Jeff Daniels is Atticus Finch and To Kill a Mockingbird? That would be great. 
All right, here's our location. Shelly's favorite eatery, Sardi's. Let's roll. There you can see through the window some of those famous caricatures. This place is notorious for having those and there have been actors and actresses that have come in here, seen their picture, not liked their likeness and vowed to never come back. So kind of a weird story to this place, but let's check it out. Let's go and have a meal. Look at the windows. Check it out. This place is awesome. I've heard that the crab cakes are really good, but I kind of want to go with one of the traditional things. There you go, Al. You're fine dining with me. I've been doing an awful lot of hot dog eating since I've been here because I've been on the go filming thing, so I'm going to treat myself to a fine sit down dinner right now here. Here we go. What's interesting is that this restaurant originally was located about a block away, and then they got word that it was gonna be demolished, the building was, so they could build the St. James Theater. So the people who were building the theater said, well, if you'll move, we'll give you a new space a block away. And they weren't really having great success when they moved in, so the caricatures were how they got people in here. And Ted Healy, if you remember my video on his beating, he was the first caricature they did. You'll probably notice that they're all signed as well. That one's Kevin McCarthy. If you take a good look at the four of them above the bar, it's the Honeymooners. And there's a self-portrait that Al Hirschfeld did of himself. This is cool, they just brought me up to the fourth floor where they keep the oldest ones. I think Shelley's is up here, they said. There's Betty Davis, wow. Erna Loy. Wow, look at Vincent Price. All right, we finished our food. Let's head through Times Square. Check it out. Makes me think of the, uh, the old James Dean photo. Look up there, you can see the 2019 ball that they drop in that ceremony. Lots of people out today. Lots of people out every day. Check out all the Planet Hollywood handprints. The way they light up over here. So our next stop is gonna be a filming location. Now the main sign here in the entryway may have changed a little bit, but this is the original filming location from Penny Marshall's Big. This is where when Josh becomes big, played by Tom Hanks, he comes to this city to hide out and ends up staying here. Billy and he come here and this is where Josh says, I don't know, Billy, this place looks kind of scary. Billy says, don't worry, Josh, it's religious. Hotel St. James. Now the, the sign up here is different and the doors are different, but this right here is exactly the same. This is where they walk in. All right, so since we're talking Penny Marshall's Big and Josh Baskin, let's go to the next obvious place from that movie, FAO Schwartz. Kind of a cool art piece here you can take your photo in front of or with. Walking by Christie's right now, Christie's Auction House. Hey, it's Elvis. Some serious memorabilia has been sold at that place, that's for sure. Here we are, the world famous FAO Schwartz from Big, where Josh Baskin and Robert Loggia, well Tom Hanks and Robert Loggia, made cinema history. Smile! How are you? And hey, let's face it, who doesn't love a great toy store? Especially one of the greatest in the world. Whoa! Let's go upstairs. Here we have the world famous piano. The first time I ever heard Chopsticks was Robert Loggia and Tom Hanks playing it on a piano right here. Actually, it wouldn't have been located exactly here because the way the shot is, this isn't in the background. It would have been more like pointed towards that direction. But you can take your shoes off and go play it, so let's go play it. Who we have here. I wish, I wish I were big. Look at the spaceship. 
Whoa. Look at this Lego FAO Schwartz guy. Optimus Prime. This place is really, really well decorated. Look at all the fun. I'm doing a little bit of magic. And right across from FAO Schwartz, I kind of gave you a little taste of it, Rockefeller Center. Come winter time, this is the place to be. Now this is the Comcast building and you can actually go up to the observation deck on there. So we're gonna do that. So you can see the Rainbow Room NBC Studios observation deck sign over here. You can take an NBC studio tour. I've taken it before. I'm not sure if I'll do that on this trip or not though. Let's go find that observation deck. That is quite a few things to be filmed here, huh? And of course, Saturday Night Live has always been here. Let's check out their merch store. Cool. Now we're talking. Burns and Allen, Sammy Davis Jr., Bob Hope. Of course, some Michael Scott from The Office. This world's best boss. Mug that he got himself. And Michael Scott's office set up. <laughs> Love the older Saturday Night Live, not so much the new stuff. Actually, none of the new stuff. None of it. All right, I just bought a ticket to go to the top of the rock and it was 40 bucks. That's almost how much it costs to go to a Yankee game. Actually, you literally could go to the Yankee game for less than that. All right, I guess we're taking this. All right, you can see some stats that we're gonna see up there as we wander along the top of the Rockefeller. See, they try and make everybody take that photo. It says it's gonna take 45 seconds to get to the top. Here's our first view and we actually get to go up two more floors higher than this. What a view. I think the stairs to go up to the last section right up here, right there. <laughs> Definitely a cool experience. under the Rockefeller Plaza. They have a whole world under here. Now I showed you one side of Rockefeller Center. Now let me show you the other really beautiful side. It would be really cool to see this with the ice and everything. There's the famous front to Rockefeller Plaza. So where we're headed to now is right around the corner. All right, I wanna make one more stop for today's vlog. Well, here it is on the corner, the home of the Rockettes. At the time this was constructed, this was the largest theater 
in the country. And now it's pretty well known for hosting the Emmys and the Daytime Emmys and the Tony Awards and things like that. As well as, like I said, the Rockettes, one of the most famous precision dance groups in the world where they do that big kick line, which is their signature move. And they always have that big Christmas spectacular here as well. And don't anybody show Mrs. Adika this, but Lenny Kravitz is performing here. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. Thank you, Michael Usri, for becoming my newest Patreon. I hope you all enjoyed the first part of our walking tour of Manhattan today. Come back and see me. In about two days, you're gonna see the other half of what we did today. Have a great night, and goodbye.